is. Uh, let's take a look at what we got here, see how this is treating us. Um, now, I think what's key to me, and really what I'm going to do, is go over the impulse momentum labs, where, think about, we had a rubber band attached to a scale, or a force sensor, and then that rubber band was tied onto a little cart on a track, where our little motion sensors would detect the velocity of that car. So we would get graphs on how the velocity of the car changed. Meanwhile, we also simultaneously got a graph of how the force that was um, the rubber band was applying to the scale, how that changed over time as well. So we had a velocity versus time graph and a force versus time graph. Let's take a look here at how these little activities went. So here's one. Let's see how this goes. So yeah, you can see the rubber band. You see it tied to the little car. You see the motion sensor on the track. Uh, that was our little setup. And then when we pushed on it, we would get that velocity time graph and a force time graph. So let's go ahead. Let's see what these look like here. OK. So I think yep, there it is. That's going to give us the force. I've got, notice I've got a, you know, a mass kind of stuck on that cart. So this is kind of that one of the heavier ones here, but I think I'll do this. Let's see how this goes. All right, push that little green button. All right, I'm hoping you can see that red, that's the rubber band, that's our force graph. And this blue line here, that is how the velocity changed with respect to time. Please notice that peak of the rubber band is when the car stopped. That's when the velocity got to zero. So here, take a peek. Let's try another one here. Okay. So here, I'll push the little green button. Go grab my car. Whoa! Yes, once again, that peak stretch on the rubber band, that maximum force right there, is at the same time the velocity equaled zero. So if you look at that, um, really on Logger Pro then, once you got those graphs, you could really start to kind of move your cursor around. If you notice as I'm moving my cursor, um, the coordinates can be displayed. So really a lot of times what we would do is highlight that piece of the graph we liked, and then you could click like our little statistics button here, and that would give us the average force that was applied. Um, I could even go up here and highlight it again for hit my stats button and get the uh, minimum and the maximum velocity. That would give me my delta V. Your final velocity is up here, your max. Your minimum velocity, it's negative, it's down there. Remember, the reason that velocity is negative is because that car is moving towards the sensor, the rubber band is fully stretched, and then the car moves away from the sensor. Another thing we could do, and that's coming down here to that force graph, is uh, find the area. And when we found the area on this force graph, it would uh, multiply force and time, or we would get newtons per second on that. So let's take a look and kind of see what these graphs looked like and how that allowed us to um, kind of fill in the lab sheet. So hopefully, if you've been to our class website, everything I'm clicking on is there. So if you haven't seen the class website, remember we started um, the semester with our stair lab. Then we would type in data using Logger Pro. Then hopefully your group got to push the car a few times and see how those graphs were made using the sensors. Um, then we push the cars around with our own springs in your own hand. So hopefully you've done that conservation of momentum lab. There was a note packet. Um, hopefully you've kind of made a few notes on there, or kind of reviewed that. And hopefully you've started on, or, um, or soon you will start on, that practice quiz I gave you. So yes, if you haven't been to our website, everything we've done is up there for you. Um, so here, let's take a look at this um, lab where we were pushing the car with the rubber band. So we got a velocity versus time graph and a force versus time graph. So let's take a look here at the 
first trial. So hopefully you got to, this is what I got when I was playing around with it. So just half a kilogram, that's really just an empty car. So let's take a peek here. What did I, what am I kind of looking at there? So that delta V, to get that delta V, hopefully you can kind of see, and really, like I said, I just highlighted that piece of the graph. My final velocity was the max. My initial velocity, initial velocity was the minimum. You can really also get your delta T, your change in time, where the time stopped at 2.74. The time started at 1.98. So hopefully you can kind of see where those are coming from. Uh, the delta T is just final minus initial. The delta V, final minus initial. And so from that delta V, you can multiply it by the mass of the car, and that is the change in momentum. So here's one way to get change of momentum. Now the other thing that I'm hoping you're starting to see is that multiplying force and time also gives us a change in momentum. Multiplying force and time, force and time, is really the same as finding the area underneath that curve that the rubber band gave us. The area is the same as an integral. Uh, the area here is 1.8, so that's where that is coming from. All right, then the area, it's pretty close. A good way to think of what this area of this kind of weird parabola is here, this weird curve, it's roughly the average or the mean force multiplied by your time. So that mean or average force multiplied by time gives us a momentum change similar to the other ones. So as you kind of go through this activity, you could calculate momentum mass times velocity. You can calculate momentum, momentum force multiplied by time or force multiplied by time. They should all give about the same answer. So if you tried trial two, you're just looking at the graphs for trial two. So once again, this is all on our class website. So this is really a, um, what I would love to put on this quiz is I would like to give you kind of a screenshot or pictures of these graphs and have you fill in the data table. So be able to identify your delta V, your delta T, um, be able to I recognize that the integral is the area and be able to recognize that the mean force is the average force. And then I think that's what really allows you to fill in these data tables. And a great way to check yourself, these three ways to find momentum are about the same number, then that means you're doing it, doing it correctly. So hopefully you've kind of gone through these different trials. Once again, all three of those graphs are attached um, to our class website. Now, where, where's the value in this? And, and um, we'll see a little bit of uh, some kind of old driver's ed videos where, where these car collisions occur. Um, and so this um, multiplying force and time and setting that equal to mass multiplied by velocity allows us to figure out how much force it takes to change the momentum of something. So a big car, a couple thousand kilograms, that's like a Honda Civic, I guess, was going, it's like 70 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour, it's fast. And if it comes to a complete stop in a split second, two tenths of a second, that's about 300,000 newtons of force. Uh, but if you just stop your car using the brakes, not crashing into a telephone pole or something, but just applying the brakes for more time, more time, uh, that requires a significant less force to change the momentum. It's still the same car, it's still the same velocity, it's still the same momentum change. But by changing delta T, by changing that time of impact, you can significantly change um, the force. So if you increase that time of impact, you decrease the force needed to change the momentum. That's really what it's saying here in number three. 
All right, so hopefully you've kind of looked at that. Um, and that, I think, to me, is just a key, key activity, a key, key lab. Um, so the